deficiencies. Yeah. I mean, they have uh, yeah, food testings. Yeah. I mean, I find that these kids that are here, they're eight years old. We have one that was so extensive and excoriated. I mean, head to toe with the light and black kind of. Yeah. Never had any RAS testings. Never had any IG. Has asthma. Okay, there's blatantly no yeah. autoimmune checks. I mean, those are the other things. You see these kids are loaded and they've never had a workup. Those kids really need a dermatologist and they really need a workup. They do. I mean, I think that most pediatricians feel comfortable doing like kind of uh, hydrocortisone yeah. and then trimcinolone, which is yeah. kind of your second step. Yeah. If you're going beyond that, yeah. I think it's very helpful to have a dermatologist. It's, it's hard, hard to get from allergies. allergies. It is very it's hard. hard. It can be. It really can be. I know, I know. Really Does Joe right. have, do we have dermatology? We had one once. I don't know if we have them anymore. Well, we should have access to the UCSF Mission Bay dermatologist now. So Renee Howard and her group, yeah. um, they're all really That's nice. That's something to remember for these And they yeah. see yeah. medical yeah. patients. They do. Yeah. They do see medical patients. Yeah, so it's a really it's a good resource. Yeah. yeah. If so this is a huge one. Yeah. The, you know, with all these um, asthmatic kids are so itchy that you know, they develop a secondary infection. Yeah. 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 Was giving antibiotics is some antibiotics are best treated for general right. coverage. Yeah, and that's that happens a lot. So really bad eczema flares are often caused by staph and strep infections. And they put that in. I well, we just that. had one that was the eight year old um, that had the extensive one, and oh, we put her on. She was on Keflex because oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. strep. And yeah. Oh, shit. Keflex is typically yeah. the one we do. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes we do bleach baths, yeah, which um, we went into just that. decreases like the number of keratinocytes in the skin. Wow. Basically, wow. what it does. So. Some kids need to be wrapped up in saran wrap all night long with their steroids on, or they'll just itch. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it's, it's wretched. Yeah, this kid was I had a, I had a bunch of kids admitted when I was a resident. Was they do PO steroids at that point, or no, it's still all topical? So, um, every once in a long while. Um, what happens with some of these poor kids is they're on PO steroids for an asthma exacerbation, and as soon as they go off, their eczema gets yes. ten times worse. Yeah. Ten times worse. My daughter had that happen. Rebound. When all so of a sudden, because you, her skin would just clear up so beautifully. Yeah. And with you'd the be steroids. Like, oh my God! Not putting it together. Yeah. Oh, this is fabulous. Yeah. And then it would just come. And then bam. Yeah. So we, we try not to do PO steroids for that. Because really, sometimes. the bottom line, it's gonna come. It's, it's yeah. not as if it's gonna resolve and then it goes away. It comes and goes. You know, it comes and goes. Um, it's a it's a lot of family education. It takes a big health literacy from a family to be able to really That's take care exactly. of eczema while. Yes. Yeah. It's a it's a hard one. How about this one? It's a little hard to tell if this one's raised or flat, but how would somebody describe these? It does look raised. It does look raised. Mm -hmm. It does look raised. Some of them definitely looks raised. So how would how would we say? What about the color? Red. 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 Erythematous. Erythematous. Is it blanched, and macule? So let's say that so it blanches. Mac okay. So macule. So macule. Macules. Mm -hmm. Proper. Maybe some papules, it's hard to tell yes. if it's raised from here or not. That's that's where you really kind of need to like touch their skin, there, yeah. you know? So making sure that it blanches, I think, is one of the big jobs. It, mm -hmm. You know, blanching macules and papules mm -hmm. take this from being, like, something concerning to, like, mm -hmm. oh, the kid's got some rash and we'll figure it out. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, and, I, you know, you could also say this is a, maybe a trunkal distribution. It's generalized. We can't see the rest of them, but there is some on their arms, too, so maybe just diffuse. Mm -hmm. Although I think that... Diffuse, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty extensive... This one is, yeah, for sure. Roseola. Yeah, there you go. That, yeah, <laughs> that's... the slides. <laughs> That's right. Roseola and phantom, so it's also called erythema suidum, six disease. Mm -hmm. It's called the six disease because it was an order in which these viruses were discovered, which is kind of funny. Well, that's a significant. Usually, yeah. there's just faint. Yeah, usually. I know. Dermatology lectures are always like the worst. Yeah, the kid probably you know. had brutal high fevers for five days and was in here with us. It's caused by HHV6, herpes virus. Mine stayed home. I did not <laughs> realize that roseola, I was reading that, I was yeah. giving someone a handout. Mm -hmm. And as I was reading through it, I never realized that it was in the herpetic family. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, so, like, how many viruses are in the herpetic family? It's just it's like, a lot. There's still uh, obvious. I mean, there, it's just, it's a huge. Yeah. Herpes 1 and 2. It, it can actually. Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus. That's right. It's yeah. 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 HIV-5 is. HIV-6 is this. 7 is the one that causes Kaposi sarcoma in, in adults with HIV. Mm -hmm. 8 is like, I can't remember what 8 is. When it causes that in HIV, is it because it was dormant previously and then in yeah. HIV it comes back out and this is the way it expresses itself? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. It's very lousy. Roseola can actually cause brain toxicity. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are kids I... Yeah. Like yeah. anything else, yeah. for some reason there's a small population of kids and, you know, and adults that will, like, react a lot more strongly. Most children, mm -hmm. though, with Roseola yeah. and Phantom are kind of young. 
they get fever for, fever for three days, then they get macules and papules on the trunk that spread outward, mm. as opposed to kind of going the opposite direction. Um, you can call that a centripetal rash if you wanted to. Let's no. get it. A, uh, let's say it one more time. Centripetal. Centripetal. Meaning, centripetal. meaning going outward. Yes. Oh. Oh, like but I, I would force. just say, yeah, exactly. But I would just say that it starts in your chest and goes outward. Versus <laughs> really? measles. Yeah. So measles is a coryza, meaning a, it's a coryza is three things cough, congestion, and conjunctivitis. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's seen measles knows these kids are pissed. Mm -hmm. They are so irritable, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. sick looking. And then they get this rash, classically, that starts at the hairline and goes down. So this is not the same story. Asking how the rash developed is really important. A lot of families won't remember, but like, well, where did the rash start? Like, oh, it started on the trunk, and now it's going up his arms. Like, no, okay. And the kid is smiling at you, thinking more rosy over the <laughs> I, also, I also think of it as the fever that rashes. So it starts mm -hmm. out with a fever, exactly. and, then it, and then it rashes, it starts, and then you get a rash. And they're always afeb, yeah. I think yeah. you're happy yeah, afebrile yeah. child with That's a red, flat, and bumpy rash. So that's your kid with rosy Olin fan, little kiddo. Number three. What's this? Fifth mm. disease. Yeah. The fifth disease, erythema infectiosum. It's caused by parvovirus. Parvovirus. So kids get URI symptoms, they get a little fever, then their fever goes away, then they get this classic slap cheek. I've heard that. Which is kind of an awful term, which implies that you're slapping children. <laughs> which resolves, and then you get this very, like, you can see how this is a lacy pattern, literally looks like fine lace. Mm -hmm. That's the part that I don't think I've seen lace. is lacy afterwards. I think I see it at the slap cheek part. And I agree, I usually don't see the lacy rash. Mm -hmm. These kids will also often have arthralgias, meaning like they've got pain mm -hmm. in their knees, in their elbows, in their hips, mm -hmm. kind of at like big bony prominences. Not mm -hmm. like in the thighs, but like, you know, my joints hurt. Mm -hmm. Parvovirus, that's not the same that you, uh, um, you know, you for dogs. There is a relationship. Parvo virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 the vets. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, way down. very deadly for them. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. Very deadly. Well, um, once you get the, the heart worm. Um, right. Yeah. Once you get the rash, um, you're not infectious. You give these kids NSAIDs, supportive care. Watch out for kids with sickle cell and bone marrow suppressed kids. Mm. Well, how this virus reproduces is very interesting. It infects red blood cell precursors as far down as stem cells in the bone marrow. Mm. And all of us just get over it because our bone marrow is normal. Kids with sickle cell can get like critically anemic with parvovirus. Mm. Kids wow. with bone marrow failure, they can get just total aplastic anemia, mm. meaning they have no cells of any kind. Mm. So it's, um, it's a lot worse for people like that. Everybody else who has a normal immune system is pretty fine. Wow. So do you think that some aplastic anemias do come from mm -hmm. these types oh, of Oh, hands down. Yes. Yeah, we test for them every time there's an aplastic oh, anemia. Yeah, because yeah, okay. some kids also will get aplastic anemia from parvo, and then it goes away, and everyone was like, that was weird. Mm -hmm. Why did that happen? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, we test for them. We do blood serology for parvovirus. And I think they can also, the incidence of like progressing into an autoimmune rheumatological disorder somewhere down the line, because I, I have a rheumatologist, and that's what she said. That, oh, really? Yeah, that there is some correlation down the line. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. It's what gets turned on. It's yeah, you know, yes. it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah that's a lot we don't understand. Yeah. Rheumatology is like a big question mark field to me, at least. What's this? You guys know what it is, but you have to answer, but. <laughs> ringworm. It looks like ringworm on the right. It does yeah. look like ringworm, but what is a, uh, what, so oh, what's yeah. this? Describe I never this. get this one ever right. Raised. 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 So a circular, that's yeah. awesome. Um, uh, I would say like with a collar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it has central scaling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's ringed with erythema, right? So you have an erythematous based patch mm -hmm. with a collar and central scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what about these? They look raised as well. They look raised, right? And then obviously the red. Patchy and erythematous. No, I like patchy and scratchy. So maybe <laughs> so if they're, if they're oh, raised, they're right? So macule, large macules are patches. Mm -hmm. Large um, papules are nodules or, or um, plaques. Plaques. So, so this a, might be more, some of them are papules, yes. some of them are more like plaques, yes. I would say. Right? Um, mm -hmm. To me, they look a little scaly. They're certainly erythematous. Mm -hmm. So this is. Um, this is a very, this is, oh yeah, in this picture. What this is supposed to demonstrate is like the classic Christmas tree finding of this rash. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, so coming down in branches, it like never looks like this. It's like a miracle. <laughs> but it's classic. 
So this is pityriasis, pityriasis rosea. Uh -huh. So nobody knows what the cause is. Maybe one of the herpes viruses is an allergic reaction. Some people think it's caused by a bacteria or fungus. About 80% of people will present with this. This is a herald patch. So it's the herald for the rest of the rash. It's this big, scaly, erythematous based collar spot, usually on the back or on the abdomen. And then, a couple of weeks later, you get the rest of the rash. The patch is usually pretty big. It's 2 to 10 centimeters. Wow. Then you get these skin-colored to erythematous scaly plaques. You see how this um, person has kind of more skin-colored erythematous scaly plaques, whereas these are more kind of scaly erythematous papules and plaques. It just depends on your skin tone. So it's bilateral and symmetric. It's distributed parallel to longer lines in a Christmas tree pattern, especially on the back. That's what this is supposed to do, denote. These are longer lines. This is like a line that was made up by this dead guy. Again. And you're saying it does, it rarely does end up it being It rarely that. looks like that. I mean, it, the it's, more common thing is a dermatologist would be like, look, the Christmas tree pattern, and then you look at it, it's like a Rorschach plot or something else, and you're like, yeah, totally. I see that Christmas too. tree. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Versus yeah, sure. that one kind of sentinel Right, patch. right, which is that big patch, and then you get the kind of the rest. So some people present with URI symptoms. About half of these are itchy. Some of them are not. Mm. They're not painful. They go away. Mm. Two to twelve weeks with no treatment. No treatment. Mm. Very mysterious little. Uh, and they don't need to be isolated. No, we don't know what's causing it. Right. You know, um, they're they tend not to be. They tend to resolve a little bit faster with sun exposure too. Mm -hmm. wow. That's a little bit of a difficult thing to tell people because you don't want kids to get too much sun, but also like if it helps the rash go away. Parents sometimes are just super bothered by this. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, which is understandable, you know, they want to make sure... And they really don't good. know if it's a bacteria or a fungus. They, they don't, really know. don't know. They have no idea. I think more recent research is kind of suggesting it's a fungus. Oh. Like a reaction to a fungus as opposed to an infection with a fungus. Oh. But, no, they really, they're really not certain. Why did you tell fear? that from, like, three or something? I didn't well, I think for rashes too. Ah, it's like two more. No. It's like two more. <laughs> I think for rashes, a lot of parents have is whether they're not their kid is infectious, whether they're not they can go to school, yeah. and also whether other siblings can get it. Yeah, so totally contagious. Yes. I think that's the big question. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. But that one's not contagious. The virus is that we are. No, they don't know. Yeah. yeah. So they can send them back to school. So what's what, how would somebody describe um, this? I'll tell you that the rates. That's what I thought. Possibly. Yeah. Like, that's not a descriptor. How do you that? That's how I would feel it. Right. So, erythematous. 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 so erythematous, um, closely grouped papules, really itty bitty little mm -hmm. papules, right? Mm -hmm. They're so close together that they make the skin uh, kind of from afar, just like they're easily red. But you run your hand across it, and it's like, wow, they're so small and so close together. Leading some people to say it feels like the same people sandpaper, mm -hmm. right? So kind of similar picture here. Tongue, I'll just say that's kind of like an erythematous tongue, right? These are the papilla of the tongue, like the taste buds essentially. They get really raised. This is supposed to be circumoral pallor, meaning um, pale discoloration around the mouth. So like you said, this is scarlet fever. It's caused by primarily group A beta hemolytic strep, strep, an exotoxin producing strain. 10% of kids also will have a sore throat, or aka tonsillopharyngitis. So most commonly they get fever and sore throat and then they suddenly get this diffuse rash, but it spares their palms and soles. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I always look for with rashes, like it's on palms and soles, because there's few rashes that are. And how do you describe that white material on the tongue? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure how I would describe that dermatologically. I'm not sure. I would because say white 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 exudate on the tongue or something. Oh, exudate is just like patch. a throwaway word for yeah. stuff. Yeah. What is it? Exudate. 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 Really? That's an exudate on the tongue? Yeah, it's a whitish exudate on the tongue. Because really on the tongue we're more focused on the fact that they have the red raised uh, taste buds. Yes, exactly. And then also that around their mouth is pale. Pale. Yeah, exactly it looks like a strawberry. It really does, mm -hmm. which is help us, you know, which is important in differentiating from another rash that we'll talk about later. So it's confluent, erythematous, blanching, fine macules and papules resembling a sunburn. sunburn. Pastia lines, so if you look at these kids' skin folds, like here at the wrist, here on their mm. palms, here on their elbows, they tend to be bright red. Oh. And um, darker skin individuals, they tend to be even darker in those areas. They're called pastia lines. It's another thing that happens with strep. And then afterwards, they get exfoliation, uh, meaning that the skin, the <laughs> top layer of the skin, sloughs off. Um, it's just that's what exfoliation means. Which will be also in the hands and feet, though. 
it kind of spares yeah. the palms and the soles, but it happens on the other parts of the of the skin. Well, you'll see us uh, when they peel. Yeah. They'll peel. They peel. Their hands. They do. And their feet. They. But they, they won't have a rash at that point. It'll be erythematous. Right. So the the, the exfoliation happens as it's resolving. I see. As it's going away. Ninety to ninety-five percent of these kids will have a positive strep throat culture. Um, the treatment is beta lactam antibiotics, meaning penicillin. They don't need anything more than penicillin. Group A beta lemolytic strep is universally sensitive to penicillin. We use amoxicillin sometimes because it tastes better. I'm a little bit afraid that that's going to come and bite us because it's such a more broad spectrum antibiotic than penicillin. For kids that are allergic to you clindamycin, azithromycin doesn't cover quite as well. You know, my cousin oh, ended up having St. Ficus dance. Which oh, is yeah. where it goes neurologically and yeah. untreated um, yeah. strep rash. They so always, Korea? They yeah, they always, it. yes. Yeah, Korea. Yeah. They always ask, did he have that rash first? Yeah. And they could never find it. But is that because they missed a rash then that it developed? Or we just it's, don't know? It's probably that some people just don't get it. And they might have had a pharyngitis. And they then did. somebody just didn't test them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know? um, but yeah, something like 20% of kids that present with Korea, yeah. meaning like rapid jerking movements yes. that they can't yeah. control, have strep. Yeah. It's called really? Sydenham's Korea, again, named after some this person. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, sometimes you ask these kids that have strep, and they swear they don't have a sore throat. And they're like, no, and he hasn't had a sore throat at all. And you're like, okay. Well, that's an interesting one, too, because some people carry strep in their throats. Yeah. So are we treating people who are just kind of carrying it down the bacteria? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a mm -hmm. controversial thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about this? What is this? Perfect. Well, it's not about that. Mm. Remember when I was talking about Pustial. what it is? Erythematous <laughs> describing the terms. Pustial. So erythematous crusted. I totally agree. I think it's this fluid. How about weeping? Yeah. Um, weeping, weeping. You say that this is maybe a little weeping. Weeping implies that there's crusting. So um, I would say these are erythematous papules with yellow crusting on top. Mm. Right. These. Mm. These. Mm. This a little. This part's a little confusing. Right. So these are actually bola. Yes. Oh, and the reason is because the oh. fluid is yellow, but it's still clear. Oh. And so pus means yellow. opaque. Yes. Can't see through. Mm. Right? This is still um, a vesicle. This is still a bola. Right? It's a bola. So it's a large it vesicle. Is so this is, in, this is in Pitago. This is actually in Pitago. Oh, oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it's in Pitago. That so bola. Because it's one that can be Yes, yes. Yeah, honey yes. crusty. Yes. So this yes. has this yes. kind of this yellowish stuff that's on top. It's a bacterial yeah. infection. Mm -hmm. Historically, it was group A beta hemolytic strep. Now, almost all of it is staph, especially why bolus and the tiger. Why did that change? Well, staph is just in, um, is colonizing people's skin a lot more than strep these days. I don't know why. I don't think anybody knows why. All our use of antibiotics, so it's it certainly. I'm sure it's not helping things because you can't eradicate bacteria on your skin. It's just right. impossible. But it's, so you're saying it's being replaced? Yeah. So most most um, impetigo, especially bolus impetigo is staph. Mm. Most skin, skin infections in general are staph. Um, bolus um, happens more often in neonates. Non-bolus is usually in infants and older kids. So this would be like an older kid who might have an eczema outbreak on their on their cheek, and then they scratched at it, right? And then they got this, which is a super infection. So it's an infection with a bacteria on top of whatever skin is with it. So I've always thought of it in Pantago, though, like they're at school, somebody yeah. else had it, they yeah. were sharing a desk, and then they got it. Did they have to disrupt the skin then first to get it from that other person? You don't have to, mm -hmm. um, but people with disrupted skin are just a lot more likely yeah. to, to get it. You don't have to, though. Yeah. So it could really just be casual contact that mm -hmm. then totally. makes it... Mm. You know, these are the kids you see, they've got like a impetigo in the middle of their back. It's like, well, they didn't scratch themselves there. Well, I don't know, maybe they did, but... Um, but as opposed to the kid with like really bad eczema that has all this yellowish yeah. crusting, yeah. and maybe fever or something yes. like that on it. Well, the other thing was we'd see the kids with the, the rhino, yeah, the yep. rhinitis, yeah. you know, the... The, the strep rhinosinusitis. Yeah, and then it gets in here, and yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, yeah. you yeah. see it down the face. And so there's really no preventing that. Not really, yeah. no. Um, there's not. One thing I do with kids with eczema is I remind families that they need to trim their nails frequently. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just so they're not traumatizing their skin. Yeah. You know? yeah. Little kids, you can put gloves on their hands mm -hmm. when they're asleep. Just a, a Benadryl to control their itching while they're asleep. Just things so they're not actively the digging. Yeah. You know? And yeah, and to make them more comfortable. Um, so yellow crusting to erythematous crusty scales and erosions. Erosion, again, like loss of that epidural layer. So it just depends, topical versus oral, as to how diffuse it is. You know, a few little spots you can just do a topical antibiotic um, versus more systemic like this. Mm -hmm. I would definitely give that kid like oral antibiotic. That's a ton. Yes. It's also in a skin fold, which is more dangerous. 
Uh, Why is it more dangerous in, in a skin fold? Just because it's going to spread more from the them using it? The skin is moist there, mm. and it's already kind of broken down and infected, and moist, like, flexural surfaces mm -hmm. are tend to what's called macerate, which mm. is like they get fluid in there, and the fluid rubs and rubs mm. and erodes the skin. Like, you know, baby, like in the folds of babies. When yeah, they're like, like diapers. Exactly. exactly. Like, it's macerates, mm. so they're just harder to get rid of. Basically. What about this one? How would somebody describe this one? Vesicular. Oh, no, it's umbilical. Huh? Right, so it's an umbilicated umbilical. little red bump, which is a papule. Because vesicle has some um, clear fluid Ooh, in it, right? Or right. Right. Fluid right. In it, right? So it's, you know, erythematous based umbilicated papules. So can anybody think of what this is? See this? We see Molluscum? This Molluscum, exactly. So molluscum is one of the oldest viruses. It's caused by this massive virus. It's very similar to the pox virus, yes. like smallpox. Mm. It's extremely contagious. <laughs> Children 2 to 11 is kind of the most common. They just kind of spread it amongst themselves because they never wash their hands and et cetera. Adolescents usually get it through sexual transmission. They're either flesh-colored or pearly white, small papules with central umbilication. Mm. Sometimes the umbilication is so small that you need to use some magnification to see it. So I'll have like a resident come in and say, like, well, he's got these red bumps, I'm not sure what they are, but then when you look at an otoscope, they've got a little umbilication in them. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it is molluscum, molluscum, which is nice. Usually about 10 to 20 lesions. I've seen kids with hundreds. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I refer to dermatology to just like their whole arm, you know, especially if you have HIV, you get really bad ones. I refer to dermatology for disfiguring ones, so a million on the face. Intertriginous meaning like in skin folds because they tend to again macerate or if they're really painful um, They can take months to up to two yeah. years to resolve oh my God. Yeah, without treatment treatment um, kind of starts with well You should just put some moisturizer on it put a band-aid on it if it's not too bothering all the way up to immune activation therapies This virus is very tricky in that it likes to hide in the skin and the immune mm -hmm. system doesn't even actually see it Mm. So all of these things, cryotherapy, amiquimod, cantharidin, what they do is they cause an immune reaction around the molluscum and then the, and body. And then the body gets rid of it. It's not the medicine that gets rid of it. It just mm. activates the immune system, which I think is really interesting. Mm. The same thing with warts. Here's a fun side about molluscum. So the blister beetle toxin is cantharidin. So this is a type of beetle that's found in Africa and Central America. It causes a local blistering reaction when administered to human skin, and it is uh, usually painless, and it's by far the most common pediatric treatment for molluscum. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so this blister beetle stuff, they drop it on the skin, and you get a little blister, and the molluscum goes away. I've, I've done yeah, this. Wow. Yeah, a whole bunch of them. Is that yeah. a problem? It's a problem. Yeah. And you, we carry that? Or we don't. Do Dermatologists do. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's only dermat, yeah. not like you go to the pharmacy. <laughs> no, which is probably, yeah. you know. Somebody would How about often do we see this? <laughs> molluscum? You know, I see we molluscum see it quite a bit reasonably that. often. You know? Really? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. see a lot. Um, Maybe you don't, you don't know, know, a few times a month? Yeah. You, wow. Yeah. So, oh, it's always like we see an umbilication, we should probably have them put directly into a room because they're highly contagious. Or they're potentially contagious. highly but, contagious. But, they're, but it's not in the air, it's contact. It's contact. It's so it's if they air. But, but sit if they're sitting out in the Lobby. Playing with other kids. I'm it's one of those things where it's it's like a wart. Warts yeah. are very contagious too. But it's like but if it, it gets a wart, versus, it's like yeah, DNA. I, I kind of think of it more. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that from what I remember, warts and molluscum, you have your immune system, your DNA has a tendency to be more towards that than other kids because you won't see it in family yeah. where each kid has it. For some reason, this is, um, you can don't well, maybe. Me, but yeah, there's some bit of a, like all of us, we have a glitch in our immune system. Why I would get it, why Fran wouldn't get it, there's a glitch in our system and that you won't see it in all the kids. Yeah. And that and that's from working in the NS because we do see quite a bit of those kids back there yeah. because people think yeah, they're Yeah, I just look at the rash and I say EDMX. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Which is, and then we do a lot of rashes back there. <laughs> Gotta go, bye. All right, what's this? Ringworm. Right, so this is ringworm. Right? Um, so, can I describe uh, uh, the classic definition? If you told this to somebody, they would say ringworm. A, um, a, um, a circular, uh, erythematous based um, patch with a collarette of scale mm -hmm. that's centrally clear. Mm -hmm. Right? Versus pityriasis that had kind of scaling through the whole region. Right? Mm -hmm. And this isn't going to usually be one. It can be. 
but it's usually not one. Usually a person with tinea corporis or cruris <coughs> or whatever other part of the body is on, they usually have ones of different sizes and ages. Yes, I just saw that the other day, Yeah. and it was back at Eniacs, and I was confused by it, but and what did you call it? It was, it was a fungus, it was yeah. on somebody's back, they had just a bunch of little yeah. patches, and I wouldn't have really thought that they were ringworm because they weren't necessarily circular. Yeah. They, so they were kind of erroneous, different shapes. Yeah. And the skin was a different color in those. Yeah. And it was, and I had never seen that rash before, but it was a fungus, tinea, what did you call it? Corporis. Corporis. Corporis just means body. Mm -hmm. So, ju and so oh. it's the same fungus that's it's in other fungus. areas, but yeah. for some reason, it got on their backs. Exactly. And is that because they were sweating once upon a time in that area? Because they rolled around in the pool deck. Is that, the, the I mean, it's just seems weird. Yeah, I hear you. And I, why it shows up on why why it shows up on a kid's head and another kid their back and another kid their foot is yeah. it's a little. So it really is right. all the same family. Yeah, it's, it's just as where fungus. the location of it is, mm -hmm. yeah. and it wasn't on their legs and it wasn't in their private parts. It was literally just in the upper back. Yeah. It's the same purpose, which is really interesting. Where did ringworm come from? I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I should have looked it up. I mean, that's really what everyone thinks. Not that all the parents think it's a worm. From the old days, I'm just like, no. 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 <laughs> no. The same, same place where you uh, thought we got pneumonia. Like, yeah. I think of it. Ringworm is caused by fungus. Um, capitis, most common skin infection in children in the United States. Mm -hmm. Tinea capitis. So what you get is, you get a scaling or circumscribed alopecia. Alopecia means a hair right, loss. Mm -hmm. And classically, which distinguishes it from other causes of more serious causes of alopecia, like alopecia areata and, and autoimmune disorders, if you look really close with a microscope, you get these little blunted um, hairs. Right, So the hairs are still there. They've just been infected by the fungus, and so they broke off. You're kidding me! See, so those are those oh, little black dots. I didn't that realize that. That is diagnostic that. of tinea capitis. So the hair is still there, but the fungus has invaded the follicle and, and it broke it. So they Interesting. Broke off. So that's what it is. These areas are just being rubbed on stuff, and the hair follicles are mm -hmm. fragile because they're being infected mm -hmm. by this fungus. But, also because but they're still there. This kid's hair is going to grow back just fine. But also because it's itchy too. Kids with scratch. And uh, anything that's traumatizing okay. the hair doesn't have a kind Okay. And is a fungus infection? I know this is ridiculous, but is the fungus is it related to somebody being more autoimmune compromised? If they get that fungus infection, is it related to somebody? Except parents ask me this all the time. I don't know. Is it really related to them not washing enough? I mean, what? And I, I say, oh, let me find a handout for you because I still... Yeah, I don't think it's a hygiene issue. It's not a hygiene not issue. It certainly runs in families. It runs in families. Definitely. Um, I, so it's infectious. So, like, if the other kids in the family have it, they're likely they to get it to They catch families. it for somebody else. Though. Right. Why they and not someone else is, like... Probably one of the biggest questions just in all of them. Genetics. Yeah. So it's genetics and autoimmune. In the military, we saw quite a bit. Guys but it's that were definitely not. Because people think of foot fungus as that they. Unclean. Are, right. Yeah, so no. it's definitely not cleanliness. The feet. I mean, as a general. Well, the feet. The yeah. feet. Um, you know, the, the, the sweating. Feet. It's the sweating. Yeah. Back, you know, fungus really like moist areas. That's why we yes. see them in diapers. That's why we see them in feet. That's why we see them in breastfeeding women. You know, areas that are moist. Yes. You know. Um, so the feet is just because your feet are sweaty, or maybe you could, or some people like particularly sweaty, and then they get fungal infections more than others. Yeah, probably. Uh -huh. Yeah. Posterior kids get posterior cervical lymphadenopathy. Yeah. So if you feel on the backs of their heads, they get little lumps yeah. back there, and that kind of tells you it's an infection as opposed to just a primary alopecia. Kids that have it on the head, it's not topical. It's way down in the root of the uh, hair follicle. Mm -hmm. You need to do oral griseofulbin, which is an antifungal, usually for six to eight weeks, which is a tremendously. But long. we do do. I had that one this morning. I thought we did do ointment to the head. Um, so that won't work. It just won't. Um, you can certainly do it, I guess. Um, I, I recommend people using an antifungal shampoo for the first couple of weeks that they're taking the griseofulbin because it just decreases spread. Mm. But you could you could use salsa blue until the end of time. You won't clean. It. Oh, you so won't clear it to get capitis. So the official recommendation is definitely by far an oral antifungal. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm the medications on the skin are just topical. So the curious erythematous annular patch or plaque with a raised border and central clearing. It could also be annular, meaning like not quite circular, but in a ring of some kind. Scaling along the borders common, and then treatment is just topical, clotrimazole or something. Yeah, so what's this? Are. I can barely look at that. So. Oh, I know. Is that the bot fly? Um, it's not. That would be a bot fly. Oh, no, very cool. You know what I was, Yeah. Remember that 
we took that room to the <laughs> master oh. class, and somebody had a sore on the top of their head like that. And it was a large one. Yeah. It wasn't quite that large. Well, I I that, that's probably that's pretty rare. rare. That's, a, that's a huge bot fly. <laughs> this is called a carry. A carry on? So oh, it is an inflammatory reaction to tinea capitis. Mm -hmm. You get tinea capitis and your body freaks out and mm -hmm. gives you this big nasty looking bump. And classically I'll get a call from an outside of a doctor who thinks this kid has a, a, a bacterial infection mm -hmm. on their head and needs to have it incised and drained. Mm -hmm. If you do that, they get chronically draining lesions. It's a terrible thing to do. You don't ever do that, ever. You don't get oral antibiotics. It's actually the same treatment as just tinea capitis. That's it. You just give them mercy of all and it'll go away. But it's so nasty looking. I think that is disgusting. <laughs> Worrisome really fast, pediatric yeah. rashes. We already kind of talked about this earlier, so this is palpable purpura, oh, yeah. right? And then that's necrosis of digits. Mm -hmm. This is meningococcemia. Yeah. So Neisseria meningitidis bloodstream infection. It's terrible because it presents as a viral syndrome, cough, fatigue, arthralgias. Then you suddenly get mm -hmm. high fever, headache, you're altered, you're lethargic. Um, some kids will have nuchal rigidity. Mm -hmm. But to have meningitis, you really have to have high fever and headache. That's kind of the definition of a meningitis. 50% develop the rash. 50% of patients only get meningitis. 10 develop septicemia, and 40% develop both. The group that's definitely the best off is septicemia. If you just get meningi meningococcemia, you're usually OK. Meningitis and septicemia is usually bad. Recognizing the rash is critical. Clinical decompensation does happen within hours. 5 to 10% mortality, even if you treat them optimally. Other treatments have triaxone and mycomycin and then cardiorespiratory support, which they frequently need intubation and pressors. And this is an ICU kit. Up. Worrisome pediatric rash is number two. So, what do we see here? All right. So, up in the upper left, we see desquamation that happens at the end of the illness. That's supposed to be um, edema of the hand. I would be more helpful to have another hand in there too, but. Um, that is a very sad looking child with um, the conjunctivitis. One thing to note about the conjunctivitis is if you look closely, it's sparing the area right around the eye, mm -hmm. which is part of the diagnosis is called perilimbic sparing. Mm -hmm. And then that's just supposed to be a strawberry tongue with cracking of the lips. So it's an autoimmune disorder, usually six months to six years. It happens in late winter and spring, which may mean that it's infectious based, but we don't know. Um, five days of fever. You have to have five days of fever to have Kawasaki's disease. That's like step one. Step two is you have to have these symptoms. Limbic sparing, non-exudative, meaning nothing coming out of the eye, conjunctivitis, so red eyes, big lymph nodes in your anterior neck, truncal rash of any kind. It can be red macular, it can be papular, it can be extremity swelling or erythema, and then mouth lip erythema or fissuring. A typical Kawasaki's is this nebulous diagnosis that we're forced to consider. It's five days of fever plus at least two of the above and supportive lab findings. So these kids get liver inflammation, they get white blood cells in their urine, they get low albumin, they get elevated platelets, they're anemic, etc. They have elevated CRP and ESR. There's like this whole mm -hmm. diagnostic al algorithm. And this is a tricky diagnosis. Mm -hmm. That's why we sometimes will consult with infectious disease. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's actually Kawasaki teams all across the country at different oh. children's hospitals. And all they do is treat Kawasaki mm. because it's so hard to diagnose sometimes, mm -hmm. especially in these atypical kids. If you get Kawasaki's um, and you not, are not treated, 25% of kids will have a coronary artery aneurysm and then subsequently a heart attack. Um, this is how John Travolta's child died. Desquamation of skin, especially hands and feet, as the symptoms resolve. The treatment is high dose aspirin and IVIG and thinking of the diagnosis. I didn't and that. with treatment, that is eliminated, the 25%, um, or it just goes down? <laughs> it goes down to about 8%. Yeah. So it's like three times less, but it really makes you wonder, like we don't know how to treat it right, because it goes to 25 to 8, and that's, that's okay. <laughs> you know? it's not like, and it's not related to how soon you start that treatment. It's not. It goes. No, the coronary artery aneurysms happen between 7 and 10 days. Mm. So that's why we recommend kids with five days of fever when these symptoms get tested, you know, because we're trying to prevent the coronary artery aneurysms. Six years? Hmm. Yeah, six, six months years. to six years. Sometimes a little older. Uh, I've never seen one younger than six months. What about this one? We're almost done. I know I'm going And how did they come with the, no, it's 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 the, the, the that it's autoimmune? Right. Well, yeah, the, how do we know it's yeah. autoimmune? Well, because there's all these um, serologic okay. studies okay. on like, well, this, so, you this, know, this okay. immune cascade is I was activated. Just curious, and, I had not bloviating and hand yeah. So, but you, they think that it's probably viral related. It's, I mean, it that's spikes like, in the I thought it's right. Right, so it, it so stands for virus. Like and, 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 
and that we, second step and the body just it cascaded from there. Exactly. Its own but we've never been able to rejection. identify what you know, what is the virus. Yeah. Um, which is, there's lots of viruses. So this is supposed to be measles. So we'll talk about the findings. So it's an RNA virus. It's probably the most infectious virus mm -hmm. in the world. If Ebola was this infectious, there would be a horrible problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, every one person with measles will infect 15 unvaccinated mm -hmm. others. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is just, compared to other infectious models, it is just so infectious. That's why all these Ebola, are... one person with Ebola will affect like four other people yeah. with Ebola. Mm -hmm. 15, I mean, that's just... And be, obviously, because it's in the air. Yeah, exactly. And it, and it just... Are you it, it, it yeah. goes so far? Just or like there's pots. more... Yeah, Rock why it is, it? Uh, it's the, the virus is very good at binding to receptors mm. in the nose. Mm. Um, because it's spread in the air, by definition, it's much more infectious. Mm. I think it's probably those two things. I'm not sure what else. Mm. That's amazing. But very oh. infectious. High fever, irritable kids, you know, versus your viral exanthem. The little, like, mm. smiling, mm. you know, eight-month-old. was like, that, that, that. They have a little fever. They have some cold mm. symptoms. Kids with measles don't look like that. Coryza, like I said, conjunctivitis, cough, congestion. Then people get coplic spots. Again, some dead person. Um, this is a coplic spot. It's classically on the buccal mucosa, meaning the sides of the mouth on the inside. <laughs> then you get this rash that starts at the hair and goes down. As the infection resolves, it goes um, from wherever it stopped down and then up. So that gives you another tip up, and it's measles. So measles is coryza, coplic spots, and then rash here that goes down. Then it resolves in the reverse order, which I think is kind of interesting. We can only yeah. find that spots in that mucosa. Yes. Um, yeah. Always. I don't know if everybody has them, but it's it's a very it's, it's very diagnostic. Non-blanching. I don't think I've ever pushed on one of these guys in somebody's mouth, but I would imagine that they're non-blanching. But I've never pushed on one. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I don't think well, the mouth is so bad. Yeah. Actually. No. No, I, I saw it um, a couple of times in residency. We just got kids kind of from the Central Valley that weren't vaccinated, mm -hmm. you know, after visiting. Park type of situation. Mm -hmm. well, those who um, but not yeah, vaccinated. luckily it's very well. And just very because rare. you're vaccinated does not mean that you're completely immune. There's all sorts of different different uh, differential uh, mm -hmm. uh, contributing factors to a vaccinated child obtaining measles. Yeah. Also, yeah. Sick. The like CDC proper just, use of the vaccine. And, right, and their immune system response. Yeah, now they're even saying like when people get use a lot of Tylenol that it doesn't trigger the same kind of reaction of right. the immunity. Mm -hmm. Right, so we used to give Tylenol all these kids who got their vaccines, and it turns out we were probably decreasing their reaction Versus to the vaccine. Versus when they look at it in like uh, European countries that don't say. Like for my kids, they said take Tylenol before you come to the doctor's office to get your immunization. They say that at your doctor's that office. Previous with my kids who are older, but they would like prepare me by taking Tylenol. Yeah, yeah. To get an immunization, and in European countries, they are not into this preparation with Tylenol or use Tylenol every four hours for the next three or four days is what they would tell me. Wow. So by I would give my kids Tylenol every four to six hours after with every immunization. Yeah. To avoid them feeling poorly, and that's we rough. Find that it that yeah. really did block the body's ability to re react to the immunization. Well, it's actually you know, like, just it, the, the studies with the CDC and all the research is actually proper handling and storage of the vaccines. That's where our protection our decreases, and, and that's too. what mm -hmm. my husband's job is 24 7 mm -hmm. is to ensure and documenting all that mm -hmm. and seeing if there's a correlation between an outbreak and the vaccine. Uh, Lost storage, yeah. decrease, you know, unvaccinated, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. the, the primary issue, which is, is a big thing right now, is proper right. vaccine You're actually storage. giving a good vaccine. Versus. Exactly. You're handling it properly, which this vaccine, is, and the varicella is actually very, very sensitive. sensitive to light. Mm -hmm. You want to mix it and give it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. This is this morbilliform rash we were talking about. There's this terrible entity when people say that like there's no harm to measles. About 5% of kids who get infected with measles get this thing called SSPE. Mm -hmm. uh, the full name is uh, subcutaneous sclerosing panencephalitis. Mm -hmm. It is an encephalitis, meaning a brain inflammation that destroys your brain. And there's nothing to do about it. And if you get SSPE, the mortality rate's like 90%. Mm -hmm. It's just terrible. And it really is 5%. It's high. Wow. It's, wow. it's like way higher than normal things. So it's, it's awesome that we've actually eradicated measles. Um, and I've only seen that once. Prevention, um, so MMR vaccine is given at 12, 24, and then 46 years, and then as a booster later on. Wow. Two more. 
What's this one? This is supposed to illustrate a smiling child, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> right? So we have purpura, right? It looks raised, right? So it's bigger than a petechiae, it's raised. This is palpable purpura. I also put it specifically on the buttocks and the backs of the legs, because this is the classic mm -hmm. case of uh, Hannah Schlonen purpura. Mm -hmm. So these two doctors, Hannah and Schlonen. It's the most common vasculitis in pediatrics. Uh, it's also called IgA vasculitis because if you biopsy the skin, IgA, that's the immunoglobulin, is actually embedded in the skin. Yeah, out of here. Which is interesting. Um, immune complex deposits also go into the mucosa, so throughout the entire GI tract, so these kids get belly pain. Mm -hmm. um, in the joints, so these kids get like arthralgias, pain in their joints, and then also in their kidneys sometime, which is the one thing that we work with. <coughs> So they typically present with kind of lowish grade fevers, and eh, my joints kind of hurt. Occasionally they get abdominal pain. Every once in a while you'll see a kid who's uh, having bloody stools. Mm. Those ones you worry more about. And then this kind of classic rash. The child otherwise looks very well, as opposed to a child with meningococcemia or some other. And so that's kind of the key, well-appearing child. Labs you could check. I think here, at, a, at in other children's hospitals, I mean just here, we're pretty um, okay with just diagnosing this clinically. If there's a doubt, making sure that the child has normal number of platelets, mm -hmm. making sure that their blood's clotting normally, right? Checking their electrolytes, make sure their kidneys and their liver mm -hmm. aren't affected. Doing a, a call blood test of their stool. Checking their urine for signs of kidney compromise, too. The treatment is um, NSAIDs. So we give these kids something to make them feel uh, more mm -hmm. comfortable. And then they get a urinalysis weekly with their PMD. And what you're checking for is glomerular nephritis. Mm -hmm. So a sign that there is now mm -hmm. a complication associated with the kidneys. Mm -hmm. And rarely that will happen. Um, and some of those kids will go on to have failure, but that's pretty rare. More severe cases get steroids. So really bad arthralgias, really bad uh, belly pain, bloody stools. Some of these kids can also are a high risk for intussusception because their mm -hmm. lymph nodes get bigger. So you have to mm -hmm. think of intussusception yeah. in kids with real wow. bad belly pain. Especially Isn't it kind of like when you give steroids to these kids that are trying to fight an infection? Yeah. Isn't that kind of like how how does that work? You know, like before we used to never give steroids to an asthma patient who had a pneumonia, for instance. Right. Now we give steroids be to pretty much everyone, even if they have a pneumonia. Right. Is it that the correlation now we don't think is as strong between giving someone who has an infectious process steroids? It's not as much of a big thing. It depends on the infection. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, there's all this research uh, for haemophilus meningitis, mm -hmm. that if you give kids steroids within a one hour of receiving antibiotics for their meningitis, their rates of brain damage and um, hearing damage are cut in about a third. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes the immune system seems to over-respond to infections. Mm -hmm. and so, there's like some places where you can use steroids, in order to control the immune response. Because it was good at And sometimes of when you make it worse. And so it depends on wow. the infection and where and in what person and yeah. in what age. It's pretty specific. And is that because it's like autoimmune-esque and you're stopping that? You know, the idea I think is that the, your inflammatory cascade that's activated mm -hmm. by the infection is too strong for the infection. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of what happens in a pneumonia, for instance, when your lungs get filled with fluid and et cetera, that's all your immune system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not the bacteria. Right. Responding. That's your immune system responding right. to it. Exactly. And that makes you sick. Mm -hmm. But it also fixes the infection. So it's like to control an overdone um, response, I guess is the idea. But it depends. And it, it's a very interesting question. All right, last one. Oh, look how happy. I know, look how happy. That's supposed to be a smiling, you know, mm -hmm. happy child. So, uh, last, last descriptor. Chicken pox. Chicken pox. Right. Chicken pox. Chicken pox. This is chicken pox. So, it's, it's a classically an erythematous based um, vesicle, right, in a well appearing child. And this is supposed to show kind of how the lesions mm -hmm. develop over time. So, this is chicken pox caused by varicella. It's also a herpes virus. Uh, low grade fever and, and URI symptoms. Then the rash is described as a dew on a, a dew drop on a rose petal. The rose petal being like the redness and the little dew drop being like this little water dot on their skin. Uh, of note, this does not really look like a dew drop on a rose petal, but it's also chicken pox. So take that as you will. Um, and it's again, it starts on the trunk and spreads out. Smallpox, which we don't ever see mercifully, spreads inward and also looks different. Various age lesions, so your kids will have vesicles, but they'll also have like kind of scabbed over crusted lesions. So the rash total um, total time lasts about 10 to 14 days. Um, so kids aren't contagious until their lesions crust over. over. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. So it's once the kids all scabbed over, then they're not contagious anymore. But the incubation period is what up to 21 days. Yeah. It's a long yeah. time. Yeah. So this is a big deal for moms that get chicken pox primarily when they're pregnant. 
right around the time of delivery. So um, treatment one month and above, symptomatic care. Those kids are fine. It's this really fascinating um, virus. It starts out and almost nobody who gets chicken pox until they're like 10 or 12 gets sick. Almost nobody. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden when you become an adolescent and especially in adults, unvaccinated people get chicken pox and get so sick. Like ICU intubated meningitis yeah. sick for reasons that are mm -hmm. totally unclear, which I think is really interesting. So those kids, unvaccinated adolescents and adults, they should get a cyclovir starting within 24 to 48 hours of the rash because there's a much higher complication rate. Oh. And three babies <laughs> on each other. It can also stimulate shingles, and shingles, shingles will give you chicken pox. Shingles is a reactivation of chicken pox. Chicken pox. Yes. Yes. Like it's just, yeah. I got chicken pox as an adult. Yes. Yeah. And I yeah. got it as we had all gotten immunized, but probably my child, we all got immunized at the same time because I had no titers to it. Mm -hmm. And he probably got exposed to it prior to our immunization. We were all at family camp and he sure. started to come down with it. But I came down mm. with it in the middle of sea room in the ICN. Oh, wow. Overnight. Oh, no. The fever wow. 